Hello ladies and sirs, welcome back to AKA Basically Anything, I'm Sir. Today we're doing a tutorial on command blocks. When we're working contraption series, there's been plenty of questions on how on earth I do what I do. I thought I'd make a basic command block tutorial on the different types of command blocks and the commands that I personally use the most. Not many people seem to understand how command blocks work, so hopefully this video can help you understand what the three different types of command blocks do, as well as some different commands which can allow you to make some really cool builds. At least in my personal opinion. So let's begin. I have set ourselves up a bit of a course to go through to show us the different types of command blocks and different commands that I personally use. Alright, oh. This is the most basic type of command block, this is an impulse command block. You open it up by right clicking on it. You can only open this up if you are in creative mode and you are opt if you are on a server. This is the text field you put in your commands and you also got these three buttons here. The first button helps you switch between the three different types, impulse, you then have the chain, which is this one, and repeat that one. You also have the option to unconditional and conditional, I don't really touch it so just leave it on that. And you can also set it between needs redstone or is always active, which is actually a pretty helpful one. You also have this button here so as you see the previous output that's there, so just make sure you have command block 5. Normally open it automatically when you put something. So in the text field we can put any sort of command we want in here. We can put something very simple like say hi. So we can come around and hit the button in order to say hi. The most basic of the basic. But of course there's many other things you can do than just that. Here we've got three different commands that I use quite often. We've got dash particle, play sound, and clone. Let's give you a quick look at particle. So the particle command is dash particle, you do micro for whatever particle effect. This is using drag and breath. You then have where you want it to appear. So this is the tilde is relative to wherever the command block it is firing the command from. This is doing one block above itself is where the particles will appear. You then have these three numbers here, which determines the size of like the dimensions. So this is only one block is actually causing them to spawn. If you set if you set these three numbers to something like a bunch of threes, it would then be doing it in a three by three kind of radius. This number here determines the speed, and we have it pretty slow. And this 100 at the end here is determining how many particles are actually being played in the activation of the command. So this is um this is so this is playing 100. This fat last thing here saying force, this allows you to be able to actually see the particle from out of your normal particle render distance. It forces it to basically render it from further away. Once you have that, push the button and here you go. We can also substitute this for something else, like let's say, sneeze. And a chew. Here we have play sound, play that again. Here you got the play sound, you do Minecraft and then normally it's thing like a block or an entity, then you do whatever it is in here. Normally it can be, has to be quite specific. There's actually a great list of resources on the internet to find out what particular sound you're after because there's hundreds. So come down here, just playing it to everyone. The sound is playing at the location of the command block. Here we've got volume, pitch, and minimum volume as well. Normally these two are normally sp stay the same, so one and one at the end normally stay the same. This one in the middle actually is worth playing around with in my personal opinion, because if you switch it from say a one, to a zero, it's now going to make the sound even deeper. So now you get this. You might not see the use in that, but it's really helpful. I'll show it later. You can then also pitch it to two. And finally we have clone. We do that again. Just clones that from that. Pretty simple. So you basically, so basically it works by doing clone. You set the number of coordinates in one corner, set followed by the set of coordinates in the other corner, followed by a coordinate corner of where you want it to appear. So say it'd be cloning this corner, and this corner, and then it would basically clone to like this corner and it would just bring it across over here. Pretty easy. And this can be done for like much bigger things as well. Gee whiz, there's a lot of mobs in there. As an example, clone. A pretty powerful tool if I do say so myself. So let's have a look at some of the other commands that are pretty useful. So how the TP command works is dash TP. We then are faced with where you can put in the target of your teleportation. So if you put a person's username in here, it'll work. Or if you put dash at E, I should probably explain what these all mean actually. So at A means all players will be affected by this activation of the command. So that means every single player in the world will get teleported if we do it like this. If you do at E, it targets all entities in the world. And it does mean all entities. This is a very dangerous one if you don't do this correctly. You could literally end up with every single armor stand, painting, 
item frame, everything the game classifies as an entity, or appear wherever you teleported it to. You have at P, which is targeting the nearest player. This is a pretty helpful one, generally is used the most. We then have at R, which targets a random player. Could be anyone, could be you, could be your mate. You'll find out. Then you have control, two. and then you have at S, which is just the current entity. In this one I've got here, I wanted to target an entity for the teleportation back and forth, so it's doing at E, square bracket, you put the type equals cow, it would target that particular, if you, put, if you just ended it with a square bracket here, it would basically end the command there and go, right, you're just targeting a cow. But, for sure, if we put this comment here, pretty sure then you can target it by name, you have named it cow, so it's targeting this one particular cow named cow, and then put the location of where it's being teleported to. You can then add facing and then a few more numbers here, which controls the direction the entity is actually facing, whether it's up, down, etc. But once, that, once that's all done like that, you then have this. Over here we have another command which is used quite often by me, which is dash summon. Pretty simple. You can just do dash, summon, whatever entity and where you want it to appear. There's a bunch of extra stuff here you can add on to the end. You can have it have no gravity. You can change the rotation to be a very particular way, so it's how I have it facing towards us. You can have persistence required, which makes it so the entity can't despawn on its own. You can also remove the entity's AI as well, so it can't move around or do anything. You don't even need to have any of this. You can also just add this thing on here, which just makes it silent. So that's another thing you can do. That's basically summon. As an example that you can summon anything, you can summon lightning. Lightning is an entity that you can summon in. You can also summon an end crystal. Better not destroy that. Make right way down here, we've got another command. This is the dash fill command. Very similar to the clone command. So you put two different corners of the coordinates, which we want to do. You then put Minecraft in whatever block you want. I've just put Streamlight. So when you push the command, it will fill everything between those two corners you put the coordinates of. And over here we also have the effect command. You can do dash give effect. You can do like put, you know, as we have been, as we mentioned before, whatever targeting you're doing, we're doing a named pig named pig, giving it the effect speed with, for 10 seconds with an amplifier of 10. And you can also add this thing here which allows it to show particles or not. But I put that on false. So now when I you put this command here, it's giving the pig speed. Get a little piggy. Come on, piggy. Speed. Oh, there he goes. Oh, goes. Yep, see, he's fast. He's fast! He's loose! Here we have the kind of say command thing, but we're using Twitter Raw for this one. Twitter Raw at everybody doing text. Subscribe to AKA basically anything. A very true statement. You can put the color to be blue. And you get that. And across over here, we have the title command. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen. So that works by doing dash, title. Once again, who you're targeting, so everyone, title. Title, you can do text, and you can do say whatever you want it to say. You can put it in bold, and it's like true, and you can put it in italics, true, and you can have color, and I put it to aqua. And you get that. Through here, we have this room which will give us a few ideas going off the clone command that we learned just a little bit ago. So we already know we can get two corners of an object and clone it to somewhere else, like this here. But something I do quite often in my build is I do a clone to a certain location, but I also have an object which is very similar but slightly different. Like this, there's a slightly different thing where it seems like it's slightly rotated. So what I do is I have a clock set up very like this, which has two different clone commands on either side of these two different slightly different objects. And with the clock going backwards and forwards, you can get the illusion of something spinning, like this. This trick does heavily rely on your sense of perception of how you're viewing it. I can see it rotating up into this corner thing going round and round. Some people may see it just flickering between two different things. You can try and get the effect to be stronger by adding extra particles and sounds to give more of the illusion, but this is the basic idea using cloning. There's also something else that I do sometimes, which is almost like animation. Over here we have a very basic template of a car. Not a very good car, mind you. But a car, nonetheless, you have it sitting there, and you have a bunch of command blocks located somewhere which basically clones this to a location like here. But then you have it in a chain of command blocks going around and around if you want it to loop. In this instance, I have. You have each one cloning the exact same thing, but having the clone location be one block ahead of the other. So when you do it like this, it then starts to animate. goes around and around again. It's pretty rough, but it's just so you get the idea. Now we enter into the repeating command block section. The repeat command basically works exactly the same as the impulse, except it's got the ability to repeat things over and over again. 
So like this particle command will just keep going and going as long as there's a redstone power input into it. Though, once again, you can use that thing before saying always active, and now it will just stay active without there needing to be power. But let's just leave it on like that, shall we? So with the repeat command, you can basically have it so we have multiple different things just repeating all at once, over and over again. Once again, it's basically the exact same command from the start, just tweaked a little bit. This is also where I find the play sound command to be pretty helpful as well. Here we've got the play sound for the enchantment table book used. When you hit it, it may not be the nicest sounding sound, but you can basically make that almost like a hum of some kind of machinery if you wanted to. Another use that you've also found to do with that pitching thing I've mentioned before, here I've got it pitched down to 0.5, and we're using the ender dragon growl. So now you get something like this, I, I would brace your ears. Now I don't know about you, but I can see that being used as a sound for a rocket engine taking off or something. Really cr your creativity is the limit when it comes to messing around with all the different sounds and pictures, as well as all the particles and even clone stuff. And I'm going to give an example of right here, you can do a combination. So going off what we saw before, like the cloning thing, here, we have a very basic rotating circle. Let's add a few things to it. Let's add some particles. And now we have like a little portal kind of thing going here. I don't know, you can see it as a portal, you can see whatever you want to see it as. If you want to have it, you can just add some sounds to it, make it sound like it's doing something. Like now it's an interdimensional portal. That's very, very basic, but it's the basic idea. Your mind, your creativity really is the limit. Here we come to the final different command block type, which, if I'm being honest, I don't really use these very often. The idea behind them is basically you have one command block, which when you activate it, it will then immediately activate all the rest of them in a chain, just all at once. So there's no delay or anything like that, as long as they're all facing into each other. So you can do this and have, a, say, a bunch of, like, say, say commands. But if I'm being honest, this is basically the same as just doing this with a bit of redstone dust on top. So honestly, I don't get much use out of it. <laughs> This can be very useful, this can be useful if you want to have a big line of command blocks going off somewhere which is longer than what you can do in a single redstone line of dust, but I, I don't often run into the situation where I need that many command blocks all going off once, only once, and have to be all at the same time, and not in some kind of way where I can still hook it up with redstone. I've never really had that situation. Though, this is something that is kind of helpful though. You can obviously vertical kind of command blocks without any redstone, stuff like that. You have it all activated at once, and I've got the particle command in here, and it's just poof, all along it, all at once. It's like a big strain, longer than you can do with like a single thing of redstone wire, but it's like you don't need any redstone, it just goes off in the line. It's. Woohoo! If, if, if you need this kind of thing done, it's great, it works great. But, um. Yeah, I don't know the purpose of why you need all of them going off at once. And only once, because then you have to hook up a clock and everything. If you find a use for them, fantastic. But yeah, they basically work the same as a normal impulse command block. So do what you want with these ones, I guess. So this kind of brings us to the end of this basic command block tutorial. This this is only scratching the surface zone. It's by no means a fully in-depth thing of tutorial on command blocks. If you would like to see more about command blocks, leave any questions you have below and I'll try and answer them, or even make it into a video as I really do love working with command blocks and think they're some of the best things in the game. So don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you really enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button as it really means a lot to my small little channel, and you can see even more working contraptions for me. So until the next time, ladies and sirs, ta -ra.